this stuff means freedom. It doesn't matter if you have a, an acre, a half an acre, a quarter of an acre, uh, a uh, patio, an apartment. If you can get your hands on this, you're one step closer to freedom. Everybody, thank you so much for joining me here today at Rewritten Vintage Homestead. It's the end of June. We only have, I think, two more days of June left. So I thought we would take a walk about uh, the garden and the yard and see what's producing and see what's still growing. I wanted to show you guys the pasture over this way. Um, we're under a, an air advisory until midnight tomorrow for poor air quality. So I'm not gonna stay out here very long, but it's from the wildfires in Canada. And boy, isn't that amazing? I, from Canada to here in the Midwest, the skies are all, it looks like we're in the Smoky Mountains. It's bluish and you can smell it. You can, you can smell the smoky kind of air. But I've been um, harvesting a few things out of the garden We've been doing some maintenance around the homestead uh, until the garden uh, produce comes in. Okay, so let's enjoy the last of June. This is a never-ending job. <laughs> Always going to be weeding. And there's some people uh, who don't weed. They just uh, let nature take its course. But what you have to remember is that your plants here and these weeds are all fighting for the same thing. Nitrogen, oxygen, hydrogen, and water. And if you leave the weeds, your plants aren't going to flourish as well as they would if they were the only ones getting those nutrients, vitamins, and water. After I weeded my sunflowers yesterday, I went out under the pine trees and I got some dried up pine needles to use for mulch. It's so important to have some kind of mulch around your plants because it helps with erosion. It helps to reduce erosion and keep the moisture in on your plants. Don't those sunflowers look good? I can't wait till they're tall enough that they have their blooms on them. So it's time to do something with my collard greens here. And they are looking fabulous. Your collard greens are like spinach and lettuce. Um, they're not going to form a head like my cabbage over there. They're just gonna stay leafy like this. So it's time to cut them. So let's look at some of my other leafy vegetables. This is my cauliflower. It is going to be humongous this year. Hardly any bugs. Just beautiful. Starting to curl around itself. It's going to be getting ahead here pretty soon. Just beautiful. And we go down here. And I have my red cabbage. It's starting to form. Big, beautiful florets, aren't they? Over here is my broccoli. Look, it's coming. <laughs> Hardly any eaten leaves. They just look beautiful this year. And then down here, my lettuce is forming. Isn't that cute? 
Oh, my cabbage. I said lettuce. Marshall's, Marshall's hatching the lettuce, you guys. This is my cabbage. <laughs> and it looks fantastic. Here's my collards that we just cut. I got some cherry tomatoes. This is what I've been dealing with. Deer. Coming and biting off the top of my plants. I have zucchini here. I have a lot of zucchini because my daughter likes to fry it up and bake it up and put it in salads. Looks like I have some to pick. Might as well take that in, I guess. Isn't that pretty? And then down here I have some melons. I'm not a melon eater. I grew these for our, our neighbor and my daughter. There's the tomatoes in the cattle panel this year. They're looking really good. I've been fighting my strawberries, you guys. And it's because of the coons, the squirrels, the mole, and the deer. Something is always digging it up, see? So we just added some more bait down there. I'm hoping they take a chunk out of it. And uh, I've been fighting it all season this year. Strawberries. This is a row of green beans. That, uh, well, I've got cucumbers over here on the side. My green beans, these look pretty good. I had to cover all of these because uh, something's eating the tops off. So I'm gonna try to give them a little more of a chance here, cover them for a while. I had to cover my sweet potatoes. They were getting munched off. Look at this cute gate that my husband made me. The gate uh, was on the property when, we, when my uh, husband's great uncle owned it. And uh, we're making a fence around the garden eventually when we have time. And uh, so here it is. I just love it. And then over here, I have two rows of red um, sunflowers, the mammoth sunflowers, and the medium yellow. I've got potatoes coming up. You can see I need to rehill. But I wanted to show you guys my flowers, my crowning glory. We've been working on these so hard. I want to show my number one fan that uh, Ruth and Esther are still kicking. Look how good they look. But we've been really trying to build up this uh, flower garden at this end for the bees and the butterflies. Look, 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 look. I planted a bunch of wildflowers and any kind of flowers that would attract the bees and the butterflies. And my wildflowers are starting to bloom and my coneflowers. Do you hear the cardinal? He's so happy. Lavender. You can smell that clear at the other end of the yard. All kinds. I have more cucumbers going down this fence. And then this is our swamp weed. These two big tall plants right here, and they're getting ready to flower. Uh, these are for the butterflies. We're hoping we can really get these established so that we can raise some monarchs next year. Everything takes time. You have to learn about them too. You can't just go ordering things and not know how to take care of them. My rhubarb, this is just the first year for my rhubarb, so it's small. But look at my hollyhocks this year. 
Oh, my favorite all time flower. I just, oh, I just can't get enough of these. I have pinks, deep red. Oh, they're so pretty. I have light pink. And they're just so full this year. Last year I was disappointed. I only had, you know, a spattering of them, but it takes a while and I'm letting them uh, spread too, wherever they want. So that all of this will get intermingled. And you guys, I still have my fingers crossed that either this one or that one is my watchman that I bought last year. Uh, that Thomas Jefferson has those in his garden, or he did, um, and they're black. So I'm really hoping that they do well. I had to cover a lot of my green beans and my sweet potatoes because the deer and the rabbits were coming through and eating up all the tops. So they seem to be kind of thriving now, but I'm going to let them get a little bigger before I take this webbing off. It's helped, it's helped. My swamp milkweed is starting to bloom. And this is our second year with the milkweed. So I'm thinking it should be established enough next year that uh, we'll be able to get some monarchs and let them uh, hatch here at the homestead. And they should have plenty to eat. Well, hello there, little fella. These are the two sheds we've been working on and we have another ordered. <laughs> you can never have too many sheds when you're in the country, never. Uh, but we're painting them barn red and trimming them in white. And my husband made some beautiful um, barn quilts to put on them. Marshall, do you think they're pretty? Yes. He loves them. He doesn't like the little uh, chipmunks that, that live under there. <laughs> but he loves the sheds. Over in this field, we have our uh, Indian corn which has been a battle because of the deer. On the outside here, we have uh, honeydew melons and they're doing fabulous. And then in between the rows, we have our pumpkins coming up. See, yep, you see them? We planted all kinds this year. Uh, the tan, which are the Cherokee, the mammoth, the big orange, the medium white, the regular jack-o'-lanterns. And you know what? I, I am really hoping these do well enough this year. I don't have to go down to the neighbors and buy them <laughs> to decorate. But they're really coming up. But I tell you, we come out here every morning and there's another corn stalk on the ground with a deer hoof by it and it's just a pain in the behind. Let's go look at the flowers out front. This is the first year for my snowball hydrangea and it is beautiful. It's over here in the corner of the yard and I've got some mint over here that I want to get some of because I want to put it in my ice water with my cucumbers. So I mixed my mint in with my marigolds and it just looks beautiful. Aren't those pretty? That's my second favorite flower. I love the white, the big snowballs. And it looks so pretty over here in the corner. 
I got the, the plow at a garage sale about two weeks ago. My husband painted it up for me. My little side garden where the gnomes live is looking beautiful. I have some yellow lupine over there that I just planted. It was in full bloom a couple days ago. Foxglove, hummingbirds and butterflies love foxglove. Look how pretty that is. Hey, wake up. You're supposed to be guarding this garden. Time to get up. You too, sleepyhead. I can't remember what this plant is, but it gets gorgeous and tall and the bees love it. Let's see. Let me get my glasses on. This is royal red butterfly bush. And it gets tall and big flowers on it and just beautiful. I have a comb flower over here. Another sleepy gnome. Hey, I see a butt. <laughs> this one's hiding. I see you. Lamb's ear. And a peony that I transplanted last year. This is, I just love this little garden. It's so cute. Every time we plant flowers uh, or bushes, we try to plant what will attract the bees and the butterflies. And up over the fence here, my bee bomb is blooming. I've got some cone flowers getting ready to bloom. I've got some gorgeous lilies. I'll walk around there so you guys can see them. All kinds of beautiful plants. Some of them haven't come up yet. I've got mums over in this corner. They haven't, they haven't arrived yet. Let's walk around and look at the other side. I love this plant. It gets very tall with the most delicate little purple flowers on it. I love this, this plant. It's a verbena. And it's called Bon Air. And the butterflies love it. But the little purple flowers are on the end. And they're just, they just give it just a little hint of color. It's so pretty. These are getting ready to bloom. Here's my bee balm over here. Look at how tall and gorgeous it is this year. I got my rug out here. I decided it was time to wash it. Let it dry. There's my lilies. Look at those. Aren't those gorgeous? The miniature carnations. And then in my wagon, I just have petunias. But aren't they lush and pretty? In the front here, my husband is really into purple this year. He doesn't know why, because it's never been one of his favorites. But he really wanted this purple pot. And these were on sale, so I got these beautiful, beautiful petunias. Look at those. Our roses are looking fabulous this year. And I have another cone flower that's getting ready to bloom. I love cone flowers. They are so hardy and the bees and the butterflies love them. This one's called Sunset. I've got another one popping up over here. This is our red rose bush that's looking beautiful this year. Got a little yellow cone flower that perked up 
And my daughter got me this for Mother's Day. Isn't that beautiful? And all of the flowers are just so happy over here by the, we call this our breakfast bistro. This is, <laughs> we're really fancy out here, you guys. This is where we come have our breakfast. The medicine wheel is starting to flourish. So north is white. That's our winter resting period. Red is south. That's our summer revitalization, lots of energy. That's what we're in now. East is yellow. That's spring. It's a time of rebirth and regrowth. And west is purple and black. Look at these black petunias I found. Aren't they pretty? And I don't know how you got in here. <laughs> you must have jumped over from somewhere. Uh, but purple is west. And it's really, it's really starting to look pretty. And you come out here and you stand in front of wherever you want in the wheel. And you just think about things and relax and pray and enjoy God's beauty. I saved some milkweed seeds last year and look, here they come. So I'm gonna put those in a corner of my yard with some geraniums as soon as they get big enough. The bumblebees just love my hollyhocks. And there's one that's getting mad at me <laughs> right now because I'm out here taking pictures. And it keeps buzzing over my head. Aren't these beautiful? Oh, there he is. <laughs> 